Number 9. Edward Bolin Shipwreck Death is never too far away along Namibia's skeleton coast, a 500-mile stretch of remote coastline where the desert meets the sea. It's littered with animal bones and dozens of decaying shipwrecks. These haunting remains serve as constant reminders of the unforgiving conditions that the region is notorious for. Thick fog, rough seas, unpredictable currents, and heavy winds have stranded hundreds of marine vessels over the centuries. Sailors who managed to reach land often died of thirst in the scorching desert heat. In 1909, a 310-foot-long cargo ship called the Edward Bolin became trapped in fog and ran aground. As the desert encroached upon the shoreline over the years, the wreck became partially buried in sand. Today, the seemingly out-of-place vessel sits more than 1,000 feet from the water. It's accompanied by two nearby wrecks, the Otavi, which foundered and sank in 1945, and a cargo liner called the MV Dunedin Star, which ran aground in 1942. The ships only add to the impression that the region is completely devoid of life. Believe it or not, the Skeleton Coast is actually home to numerous animals who have adapted to the harsh conditions, including elephants, hyenas, leopards, cheetahs, giraffes, and flamingos. But the only other humans you're likely to encounter there are fellow visitors who have come to catch a first-hand glimpse of its many shipwrecks. Number 8. Strange Dinosaur Around 75 million years ago, an armored dinosaur with a strange weaponized tail lived in what is now the southern Patagonia region. At roughly six and a half feet long, the Cretaceous creature was a type of plant-eating dinosaur called an ankylosaur. Dubbed Stegoros elengassin, it somewhat resembled a stegosaurus, minus its tail, which scientists have likened to an extremely flat sword or an Aztec club called a macuajito. The deadly appendage is reportedly unlike any other tail ever seen on any other dinosaur, and it's short for a dinosaur tail. Despite this, it functioned rather effectively as a weapon against the creature's enemies. The newly discovered specimen died near a river where it may have been sucked into the ground by quicksand. A. Elungassen's fossils show that Ankylosaurus evolved much differently in different parts of the world after the supercontinent Pangaea broke up around 200 million years ago. The event split Pangaea into two separate landmasses, the southerly supercontinent Gondwana and Laurasia, which sat largely in the northern hemisphere. Very few Ankylosaurs have been found in the region that once encompassed southern Gondwana, and the ones that have were much different than their neighbors to the north. They were smaller, with thinner legs and lighter armor, according to lead study author Sergio Soto Acuna, who spoke with CNN about the discovery. Number 7. Climate change may have forced Vikings to migrate. In the year 982, a Viking named Eric the Red was exiled from Iceland for committing a murder. He led a fleet of 25 ships to Greenland, where they established two communities. There were originally around 500 settlers, who established farmsteads and built Christian churches. They fished, hunted wild caribou and seals, and kept livestock, including cattle, sheep, and goats. At its peak, the colony had around 5,000 residents. But when a Norwegian missionary named Hans Egeda arrived in 1721, he found the settlements in ruins. The residents had vanished. Archaeological evidence suggests that they left sometime during the 15th century. Ever since, researchers have been trying to figure out what happened to these communities. They've proposed numerous theories, including the possibility that a volcanic eruption in Indonesia triggered a mini ice age during the 13th century. Evidence shows that around that time, the Norse Greenlanders switched to a diet consisting mostly of marine animals, indicating that perhaps all their livestock had died off. Now, researchers believe that rising sea levels may have caused massive coastal flooding that drove the Greenland Vikings away from their settlements. This builds on previous suspicions that climate change played a role in their disappearance. There was a mini ice age between the 14th and 19th centuries, and the cooler temperatures caused the Greenland ice sheet to expand. As this happened, the weight of the ice sheet pushed down on the ground beneath it, making coastal areas more prone to flooding. In the meantime, gravitational forces may have pushed additional seawater over the coast, making the problem even worse. Scientists generally agree that numerous factors were probably responsible for driving out the Greenland Vikings. In addition to the effects of climate change, they may have been struggling with social unrest, the depletion of their resources, and other problems. And even if these recent findings bring experts one step closer to solving the mystery of what caused the Norse Greenlanders to leave, nobody has any idea where they went or what ultimately happened to them. Number 6. A Roman Crucifixion 
In 2017, archaeologists found evidence of a crucifixion while excavating a Roman settlement in Cambridgeshire, England. It came in the form of an ankle bone with a nail driven through the heel. Dating back 1,900 years, the skeleton belongs to a man who died between the ages of 25 and 35 years old. He was laid to rest in one of five cemeteries in the area with his arms crossed over his chest. At first, the burial seemed pretty ordinary. Archaeologists gathered the man's bones into bags without even noticing the nail through his heel. But they saw it when they took a closer look and have since described it as the best physical evidence of a Roman crucifixion ever found. Nothing quite like it has ever been discovered, according to project manager David Ingham, who spoke with The Guardian. So at first, nobody was even looking for the nail, and it's therefore understandable that it went unnoticed. Crucifixion nails are a rare archaeological find, mainly because the punishment was typically carried out using rope and because the victims were rarely afforded a proper burial. But after examining the skeleton in detail, scientists ruled out all other possibilities, concluding that the man was indeed most likely crucified. Known as the Finstanton Man, he's a rare example of someone being crucified with nails rather than rope, as well as a crucifixion victim who received a respectable burial. Nobody knows who he was or why he was executed. Experts know that the practice was typically reserved for slaves, rebels, and lower class members of society. There are only four known discoveries bearing physical evidence of crucifixion worldwide, and at least one of them is questionable in terms of its authenticity making the Freestanton Man one of the most remarkable archaeological finds from Roman England to date. Why do you think that the man was crucified? Let us know in the comments below, and if you're liking this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. Number 5. Stolen Battle Spoils Around 1,900 years ago, during what became known as the Bar Kokhba Revolution, Jewish rebels stole valuables from Roman soldiers and stashed them in a tunnel complex. They never returned for the hoard, and some modern-day grave robbers got their hands on the goods. Stolen antiquities do more than contribute to a flourishing black market while skirting around the law. They rob both scholars and the public the opportunity to see and learn from the artifacts, which can help us to better understand the past. Thankfully, in this case, the items were retrieved. The Israel Antiquities Authority recently announced the seizure of hundreds of coins, as well as incense burners and decorated ceramics, including a wine vessel featuring a carving of a figure holding a jug. While it's excellent news that the authorities managed to get the stolen artifacts back, unfortunately, experts will never be able to study the collection in its original context. In other words, they'll never see it as it was left during ancient times. And anything important that they could have learned from seeing it that way has unfortunately been lost to history. During the initial stages of the Bar Kokhba revolt, Jewish rebels led by a man named Shimon ben Kosva captured a sizable amount of territory from the Romans. But the Romans counterattacked and emerged victorious, killing many of the rebels and some civilians in the process. It became customary throughout Jewish revolts to steal items from the Romans, but many of these objects were never used because they contained images that went against Jewish religious beliefs. This could help to explain why no one ever returned to unbury the recently recovered hoard. Number 4. Baby Neve. 10,000 years ago, at the end of the last ice age, a newborn baby girl died in the Italian Alps. She was laid to rest with an array of goods, including pendants and shell beads. Archaeologists discovered the infant's burial in 2017 while excavating a cave site in northern Italy. Based on previous finds, they expected to unearth artifacts from around 50,000 years ago when Neanderthals inhabited the site. So they were surprised when they found the baby, who they've nicknamed Neve. She passed away during the Mesolithic period, right before people began farming. At the time, people lived in nomadic hunter-gatherer groups that wandered across Europe. A DNA analysis revealed that Neve belonged to a dominant lineage of European women that emerged sometime between 17,000 and 12,000 years ago. She was just 40 to 50 days old when she died, and had experienced two major events that stunted her growth. The discovery sheds light on a little-studied period from which very few recorded burials have ever been found. It shows that even tiny babies were considered people in Neve's culture, especially since the beads she was buried with required a lot of care and maintenance and were likely passed down through members of the group. Even though her life was cut short when she was less than two months old, Neve was afforded a sense of personhood and agency by her group. But their beliefs and cultures are still largely a mystery. Number 3. The First Arrivals to the Faroe Islands until recently, historians believed that the Vikings were the first people to arrive in the Faroe Islands, a rocky archipelago located in the North Atlantic between Iceland and Norway. 
And it's true that the Vikings lived there, and that their modern-day descendants speak a variation of the Old Norse language that they brought with them. But, as it turns out, ancient British or Irish people may have reached the Faroe Islands before the Vikings got there. Newly discovered evidence suggests that the island's first occupants arrived by 500 AD, around 350 years before the first Vikings set foot there. This evidence came in the form of sheep DNA and feces found on the island of Esteroy. The sheep could have only reached Esteroy by way of boat, which means they were transported by humans. Their presence on the island appeared like an on-off switch, according to researcher Dr. William D'Andrea, who spoke with the BBC about the discovery. Lead study author Lorelai Curtin described the findings as the nail in the coffin in terms of disproving the long-held notion that the Faroe Islands were unoccupied until after 800 AD. The research poses more questions than answers, however. Although the evidence that someone beat the Vikings to the island is unequivocal, nobody knows who these early arrivals were or what brought them to the region. Dr. D'Andrea said that it was likely a group of people from the British Isles based on things they left behind, including Celtic grave markers and the DNA of present-day residents. But these newfound suspicions are controversial and remain unproven, leaving the ongoing debate open for now. Number 2. Rare Roman Mosaic While walking around his father's property in Rutland, England last year, Jim Irvine spotted some unusual pottery. Archaeologists were summoned to the site, where they uncovered a large Roman mural depicting scenes from Homer's Iliad. Measuring 36 by 23 feet, it's the first mural of its kind ever found in Britain. The artwork may have belonged to a wealthy homeowner, who may have used it as the floor of their dining room or an entertaining area, according to experts. It dates back to the 3rd or 4th century and features images of Achilles' defeat of Hector at the end of the Trojan War. There are three scenes in total, including the pair fighting, Achilles dragging Hector's corpse, and the Trojans preparing to get Hector's body back by paying his weight in gold. The team reburied the mosaic with plans to retrieve it when they're ready. Fire and construction have damaged it considerably over the last 1700 years, and archaeologists want to avoid further harm to it while they figure out their next step. The villa's owner was both wealthy and educated, according to project manager Don Thomas. He would have been familiar with the classics when he commissioned the mosaic. In addition to the villa, the team found evidence of other ancient structures nearby. They believe that the home was abandoned, then used as a burial site. Number 1. Pre-Inca Mummy Roughly 800 years ago, a young adult died and was mummified before being buried along the Peruvian coast. The people who prepared the body wrapped it in cloth, put the person's hand over their face, and bound their limbs and body with rope. These rituals were customary among the Andean cultures who lived in the region before the Incas rose to power around 1400 AD. Archaeologists discovered the mummy earlier this year outside the capital of Lima in an area known as Cajamarquilla, which was once home to one of the biggest and busiest pre-Hispanic settlements along the Peruvian coast. The individual was a young man who died between the ages of 25 and 30 years old. This according to a team that carried out the recent study. He was found beneath the city square in an oval-shaped tomb. The location indicates that he was a high-ranking member of society, perhaps a trader who had moved to the town from elsewhere to sell his goods. The mummy's tomb contained ceramics, stone tools, and other grave goods. There were also signs that visitors continued to drop by even long after he died, leaving offerings of meat and vegetables. The team is currently awaiting radiocarbon dating and other test results so that they can get a better idea of when the person died and perhaps who he was and what his role was within his community. Thanks for watching. What's the most mysterious thing you ever discovered? Let us know in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again and we'll see you next time for another amazing video right here on American Eye.